So if, um, if I've only got um, a, a few minutes left, so I'm just going to bring Ooh, some really, um, really um, quick questions uh, now. So really short answers. Uh, <laughs> Good to hear. <laughs> where do you start with prioritisation? Well, this is a great subject. A lot of people are really into this at the moment. We've talked okay. about it at the top of the hour. But yep. start with it, Graham? Okay, so uh, to follow your lead on short, uh, quick answers. So where do you start? Strategy, number one which is typically a statement or statements, strategic objectives that link to that, typically four or five, something like that. Some sort of traceability matrix between those strategic objectives and the projects and programs you have running. Yeah. And pinning all that then would be a board approved or top leadership, whatever it's called, board approved sets of prioritization criteria. Typically, if you've got a PMO function, you would then hand that to the PMO and they do that desk based analysis based on information gathering, challenge, discussion, et cetera. And they could churn that through an algorithm because you have some criteria. You might have them weighted. Each has a score and you can give a score to each project. And therefore, that's the priority. Yeah. What typically then happens in the real world is even though you've got your board membership to agree to the criteria, when their project comes out near the bottom, they want to challenge and then that's why you then have to have a conversation around the portfolio because suddenly they don't like the prioritization criteria because their pet project is at the bottom of the list. <laughs> so that's how I would start tackling prioritization. Yeah, perfect, brilliant, short. Yeah, I think I, I, I love I love that um, clear, transparent. Get on with it. I like that one. Right. Kinda. So, how do we keep documents and resources consistent? when starting new projects. You got a quick answer for this one? Um, so as part of the broadest PMO design, I would, that's tailor-made for having some sort of center of excellence solution. So a C of E is yeah. typically a permanent office. It doesn't stand up for a project or program and wind down when it's finished. Yeah. It's not portfolio facing upwards. It's more, it owns how we do stuff, yes. which therefore covers things like templates where you file things data management sharepoint sites um how to guides where do i find x um so that would that would certainly that would certainly deal with the with the documents yeah how do we keep resources consistent mm, that's a little trickier um so then you're back to that conversation we're having earlier around where do PMOs, where do PMs sit? Yes. Right. In a PMO function. But yeah. actually, if you're a big organization with a big portfolio of change, upscale it. Why don't you have a delivery function where you have PMs, you have business analysts, you have ch genuine professional change management people, not people that do comms, yeah. those sorts of things. Um, so that then infers you have a resource of people with their own skills and there's arguments for having hit teams. So the one PM works with the same two BAs, which work with the same change manager, and they go from one to another because they're just, you, you therefore avoid the forming storming phase. They just go and hit the road running. Yeah. Problem with that is that team might get a bit stale. They delivered a couple of projects really well. Of course, we'll deliver the next one and they take the foot off the gas. So then you might want to change it around. Yeah. Um, okay, that's as far, yeah. The, keeping resources consistent is a strange, strange question, but that uh, you're looking at a delivery function that has expertise in the various elements of change, not just project management. I think. Yeah. And of course, for a lot of organizations, a center of excellence is not necessarily called that, is it? It's like it's not this 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 no. thing. It's, it's normally some kind of permanent PMO. Yes. And it can be called many different things. But it's just, than not, it will be called PMO. Yeah, probably. It's just this term, centre of excellence. We tend to use it. We use it in the PMO competency framework. It's the term that has become synonymous with those things that you've described, which is where the templates live. It's where the, the methods and the frameworks and the, all of that kind of stuff sits because there has to be that consistency. New yeah, project yeah. starts. You're not starting from scratch and trying to reinvent everything every single time. So... Um, so I'm going to start, I'm going to finish on um, a really, um, and this is something that uh, is becoming more and more apparent, um, you know, with the whole world of, of PMO, um, you know, as we you know, we've got um, project controls 
generally tends to be um, organizations that are more kind of construction and engineering and that's what they tend to call their PMOs, call them project control officers or stuff like that. So why is project controls treated differently or as different to PMO? What's your thoughts on this, Graham? Um, tricky. I'm not very familiar with project controls, which suggests, yeah. therefore, I've probably worked in lots of banks and things of that sort where they don't have that necessarily. I, I, I am from, I've got a colleague who's who's quite senior in a, in a construction company. I'm sure they do. Um, yeah. So, so my response would be. I would consider controls to have an adoption focus. So it controls the way things are done. So it controls, possibly owns the framework for managing projects. It controls and owns how we plan cost and all that sort of thing. And, and therefore, my response would be that could be that could be a reasonably junior function because you're 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 pointing and signposting people to how we control the way we deliver projects mm. whereas a pmo you're providing more of a delivery function a critical friend type service typically you'd need a little more gravitas and experience to do that yeah i'll tell you what we um you know me personally think about this we've been you know, talking to many different people about it it's because generally with the construction and engineering people know how to build a bridge yeah People know how to build a road or a railway. It's been done many times. So actually, it's more about is it? It's to me, it's an easier, it's an easier thing because you know generally what that yes thing is going to end up like. Yes, take a business and IT type businesses where PMO sits. Often, what they're delivering has never been done before. Yeah. So yeah. where it's with the construction and engineering firms, it, it is very much like they can do things they structured on. They know can really nail down their costs. They know exactly material-wise, um, resource-wise. Yeah, yeah. it's, all, it's all quite known. And it's, it can be tighter on it. And, and, of course, you need to because a lot of it's very related to health and safety and risk management and all that kind of thing. Whereas, um, you know, the business and IT, is, it, it, it's, um, it is a lot more unknown unknowns than yeah. the there no. are different people and they're using different tools they're using you know things like that so i think that's why they are treated differently because essentially they are supporting a different, different. type of organization yeah so yeah, yeah. so I've, I've heard it called painting by numbers where we've done it before there's a picture in a box somebody else has then drawn all the outlines and removed the pictures and said right make all the all the twos blue make all the greens one it's that sort of we've done it before we know what we're doing yeah. it's kind of the same again um, the, another way of looking at it is the, 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 the greater the need for innovation, the further away from control you're going to be, yeah. and the more towards a what we might call a traditional PMO that provides services to support delivery of something that's not been done before or is similar but not quite the same. And there needs to be that um, experiential refinement of how we do things required. Yeah. And I would argue that in project controls, well, they're not worrying about agile, scrum. Agile at scale, any of that stuff. Because yeah. I, I would entirely agree. If, if you're talking of controlling something, you're you're command and control, right? Which is a waterfall. Which is yeah. that's the thing we need to deliver. Plan how you're going to get there and control the hell out of it. Yes. Yeah. Which is, you know, to be fair, when I first started out around PMO 20 years ago, you know, I remember all the pictures of the uh, the control. Uh, traffic control towers to depict PMOs and all that kind of stuff. That's very much project controls. Yeah. It's not where a lot of IT and business related PMOs um, are. And I can't imagine, um, you know, I can see why agile is and different agility and different ways of, of, of working are, are, are creeping in because it needs to. We need to be yeah. adaptable to whatever it is that we're trying to innovate on. So it makes perfect sense. It doesn't make the job for PMO uh, easy, but, you know, um, that's, the, that's why it makes it fun, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So every day is a learning day. Every day is a learning day, indeed. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, those are the questions that we had. And we had a, a load more, and we will be sharing them. Uh, we'll be dropping them out on social media and stuff to see what other people uh, think. Um, but we're going to be putting, um, you know, you can see all of the questions that we've just done uh, with Graham, if you've watched all of this through. But we will be breaking them up putting them out there and um, we'll get other people's opinions and uh, and see whether they agree with you Graham to the 
stupid um, questions, but yeah. they weren't stupid at all. But we love the idea. The whole idea, by the way, was that it was introduced in, in American schools to try and help children um, to get a little bit more involved in class, put their hand up to ask more questions. Uh, so that's where it comes from. And um, I think it's been a perfect uh, thing for PMO. So mm -hmm. really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, thank you very much, to Graham. We'll see you in the den. Thank you very much. Been a pleasure.